In this video, I want to do another example of using Laplace transforms to solve uh, initial value problems. In the last video, I did a second order non-homogeneous. Uh, this time, I'm going to bump it up to a third order, but I'm going to go with homogeneous just to cut down a little of the algebra. But one of the things I want to show in this is uh, just some algebraic techniques that maybe you've never done before. I don't know. You've completed the square, but have you ever completed the linear? Anyway, that's what we're going to do. So here we go. I've got y triple prime minus 4y double prime plus 3y prime equals 0. Initial conditions, y of 0 is 4, y prime of 0 is 12, and y double prime of 0 is 9. So take the Laplace transform on both sides. It's kind of nice when it's homogeneous because that Laplace transform on the right is just 0. right? And this one, of course, Laplace transform is a linear operator, and we can distribute it over the addition here like that, and then the constants come out as well. Now, the Laplace transform of the third derivative is 3 times the Laplace transform of y. Sorry, it's not 3. What is that? That's s cubed times the Laplace transform of y minus s squared y of 0 minus s y prime of 0 minus y double prime of 0. Of course, those are all your initial addition conditions that are given. And then I've got minus 4 times the Laplace transform of the second derivative, which would be s squared times the Laplace transform of y, minus s times y of 0, minus y prime of 0, plus 13 times the Laplace transform of y prime, which is s times the Laplace transform of y, minus y prime of 0. And that is actually equal to 0, but it's off the edge of the page here. Uh, yeah. It's off the edge of the page. Uh, it'll, it shows up again right there when I put some numbers in here. Right? So for the next step, what I'm doing is I'm plugging in. I know y of 0 is 4. I know y prime of 0 is 12. I know y double prime of 0 is 9. And I'm plugging them in here as well, but I'm also distributing the minus 4 in there. So the minus 4 goes there. You get that plus 4 times s times y of 0. And then you got the minus 4, so it becomes a plus 4 times 12, which is the y prime of 0 being plugged in there. And then you've got the 13 being distributed into this, and that's equal to 0 over on the other side. Now I'm going to gather some like terms. Everything that's got a Laplace transform of y in it gets together, and that gets factored out. So I've got an s cubed there. I've got a minus 4s squared and a plus 13s. Because the differential equation didn't actually have a y in it, um, so I don't have just a plain old Laplace transform of y in here, uh, the, there isn't a constant term that ends up in here. And then everything else, everything else that doesn't have a Laplace transform of y is being moved over to the other side. So the minus 4s squared goes over to us plus 4s squared, and then there's a minus 12s becomes a plus. There's a minus 9 becomes a plus 9. There's a 16s, which comes over as a minus 16s. There's a 48 that comes over as a minus 48. And there is a 52 on the negative side, which ends up as a 52 on the positive side when you move it over to the other side of the equation. Gather some like terms there. I got a 4s squared. Uh, there's a negative 4s and the 9 minus 48 plus 52 is a positive 13. All right. And then I'm also going to divide by this stuff. So that ends up in the denominator. And I have now solved for the Laplace transform of y. What I now need to do is to do the inverse Laplace transform of this thing. In order to do that, um, I need to factor the denominator and factor it further if I can, which s squared minus 4s plus 13, if I do the b squared minus 4ac thing, uh, yeah, b squared minus 4ac is negative, so I don't have any chance of factoring that thing. Um, so um, I can at least factor the s out. And so this thing now I'm going to write as, this is the partial fractions deal, right? I'm going to write it as a over s plus b plus c over s squared minus 4s plus 13. That unfactorable quadratic, I use a linear numerator. 
multiply both sides by that denominator. So they just get the numerator on the left side. Uh, the s's cancel out, leaving a times that other factor. And when you multiply by this fraction, the denominator here cancels out, leaving just bs plus c times s. I'm going to solve for a, b, and c. Here we go. I'm going to plug in different values for s. Um, first, I'm plugging in s equals 0. So on this side, I just get a 13. On this side, I get a 13a plus 0. So a equals 1. Woohoo! Now I'm going to just plug in uh, as simple a numbers as I can here. Uh, s equals 1 gives me a 4 minus 4 plus 13 on the left side. It gives me a 1 minus 4 plus 13 times a. I already know a is 1. So that's the 1 minus 4 times 13 times 1 plus 13 times 1. And plug in the 1 in here, I get a b plus c times 1. So I end up with b plus c equals 3. Now I'm going to plug in s equals minus 1. And so on the left hand side, I got a 4 plus 4 plus 13. And on the right side, the a is 1, and I got a 1 plus 4 plus 13. So there's that. And negative b plus c times negative 1 right here. So that equation turns into a b minus c equals, gather all those numbers up there, 3. So I got b plus c equals 3 and b minus c equals 3. The only way that's going to happen is if b is equal to 3 and c is equal to 0. So y is the inverse Laplace transform of this thing, which is the inverse Laplace transform of what I've done is the a was 1 and the b is 3 and the c is 0. So this fraction here turns in, that sum of two fractions turns into this sum of two fractions. And I can split that into two Laplace transforms because the Laplace transform is a linear operator. Actually, this is the inverse Laplace transform, which is also a linear operator, distributes over addition. Okay, This one right here I recognize as the inverse Laplace transform. So this is the Laplace transform of one, so the inverse Laplace transform would just be a one right there. Then there's a the question of what the heck am I gonna do with the rest of this? Okay, And so coming down here, this, this is just the same thing as that, just rewrote it. Um, what I see here is this is a quadratic denominator. And quadratic denominators I see in the signs, or potentially there, here. Um, th this, is th this is not just an s squared plus 13, which would put you maybe over on this side. It's got that s term in there. So I'm thinking it's going to be like one of these. And I get the feeling I'm going to have to complete the square on the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do next here. Well, first, the plus, inverse plus transform of 1 over s is 1. And then inside the parentheses there, I'm going to complete the square. So I'm looking at that s squared minus 4s, take the 4, cut it in half to get 2, square it to get 4. So I want to add 4, but I can't just go adding 4. I'm going to compensate by subtracting 4. And what happens then is that s squared minus 4s plus 4 is s minus 2 squared. I completed the square on that s's, and then the minus 4 and the 13 get together to be 9. So yeah, this is really looking more like uh, these denominators here. Of the s squared minus a, sorry, the s minus a squared plus b squared. So it looks like the a is going to be 2 and the b is going to be 3. All right. So now looking a little more closely at those two, um, this one just has a number on the top and this has an s minus a. I don't have either of that. I've got a 3s. So what I'm going to do, on the bottom I completed the square, on the top I'm going to complete the linear. That is, I don't want a 3. I don't want an s here. I want an s minus 2. So I'm going to replace that s by an s minus 2 and compensate. So actually by, by saying that that's an s minus 2, it's multiplied by 3. So that's actually 3s minus 6. So I'm going to compensate by adding 6. By putting a minus 2 inside the parentheses there, I have subtracted 6 from the top. I will compensate by adding 6 to the top. And then it's the net result is I added zero. Okay. How's your algebraic agility? So now I can split this up into two, and I apparently have the wrong number of parentheses here, and I'm not going to 
Yeah, I am going to let that bother me. So the Laplace transform of the sum, inverse Laplace transform of the sum, is the sum of the inverse Laplace transforms. And uh, one thing I noticed is this three kind of slipped out in front, but that's all right. It's multiplied in the numerator or it's multiplied out in front. But with that three out in front, I'm going to be able to pull this, you know, it's a constant multiplier. So the three is going to slip out in front. And now I will have inside here the, the s minus two just on the top, like the s minus two squared on the bottom. And this looks like the inverse Laplace transform of an exponential times a cosine, where this one over here now, what did I do? There's a six here and I factored a two out, leaving a three behind. Why did I leave a three behind? Look back up at the chart here, right? That for the exponential times the sine, the numerator has to be the square root of whatever that number is there. So I've got a nine sitting in this spot, so I need a three up on top. So to get a six out of the three, so to get a three out of the six, I factored a two out, right? So the two came out front, leaving a three behind. So this one is e to the two t times the sine of three t, where this one is e to the two t times the cosine of three t. And of course, the one was there from before. And so there you go. There is a third order differential equation solved using Laplace transforms. Good luck doing your homework.